uh, earlier um, we were talking about the personality and, and we refer to it as a castle, you know, something that protects and yet imprisons or can, can do. Um, and I asked the question, you know, how can we live without the castle? Mm. Um, by which I mean, obviously, how can we, I, we live without the protection that a personality can afford us? Um, rather than, you know, how can, I, how can we live without that imprisonment? Yeah, good question. Um, you see, the, the um, assumption there is that all the protection comes from the personality. I would say the protection that one needs to live this life doesn't all come from the personality. It's, it's part and parcel of the self. So I guess it'd be good to have a little a kind of resume of what I mean by the self. So what I mean is the self is the sense of self that um, a person needs to operate in the world and to appear in the world, the relative world, as a separate being. And this is a natural phenomenon that arises, which is then kind of overtaken after the wound by personality and becomes a kind of, um, you could say kind of becomes impure before it's pure. It's got no agenda. It's got no emotion. It's just a functioning thing that serves us and allows us to operate in the world. But after, when it's, it becomes aligned, uh, taken over by personality, it's no longer impartial. It's, it's got an agenda, uh, all the agenda of the personality and the pain and the suffering and the everything else, the emotions and the beliefs. So it's no longer impartial, um, but that self is, is at the heart of your experience on the planet, really. It's still there, it's just been kind of adopted and uh, colonized by the personality. So without the personality, the self is revealed and it's functioning and it can function so much better without all that the personality puts on it. And we do need a sense of self and we do need, you know, a protection at times and an idea of me and you and all of that. And the self provides that perfectly and much better without the personality. So I, I know sometimes if I'm feel attacked yeah. and I react, I can, you know, make the situation much worse. That's when my personality gets involved, exactly. when I react. Whereas if I stop and pause, mm. you know, or don't act immediately, I, I rarely regret it. I rarely regret not reacting. And I guess that's, you know, beyond personality, isn't it? What, what I'm saying is that I can understand, you know, I can see how it's possible you can defend yourself better without the personality giving I would say that, say, martial artists know, the, know that to act without emotion in a fight is when you're going to be protecting yourself and fighting the best. Because emotion throws you off balance and, and makes you not centred. And if there's anything you need, is it's centredness which is another way of really saying is being in the zone or, or coming from non-doing. So there's an understanding somewhere that of what the best thing to do is in each moment, the, mm. best, the best move. And if you want access to that, you don't want emotion because emotion actually blocks that. You want to be free of all that. And then there's pure action, uh, there's non-doing. And then literally in that scenario, the best protection you could get. So without the personality, you actually don't have to worry about self-protection, who's going to look after this being. But um, the, self, the personality does, in one sense, you could say, offer a lot. You know, it, it gives you that... It's good stuff. <laughs> well, it appears to be good. It, um, it gives you a sense of um, who I am, where I want to go, what I want to do, all of those things... Um, offer you a kind of, um, you know, living through personality is a way to be in the world. And it does, as I say, offer all these things. And it makes you feel safe in a way because you have this thing that, you, as far as you're concerned, is real and true. Um, so it is true to say, because I didn't want to kind of belittle your question about how can you live without the castle, um, that without that, there is an entering into 
unknowing. How do I operate without this system that I've come, become so used to, and which I think of and I know of as what is myself? So I'm not saying that there isn't a you know massive amount of what the hell is this? Where am I? How do I? How do I exist without? that that is the adaptation um and it is a hell of a reorganization and it has it's a hell of an adaptation it's not it's not something that immediately kicks in necessarily it's the system has to change it's it's not that it's not there but the system doesn't it's not familiar with it yet and you're so familiar with this track that to operate without that track and shift over to this track where the protection and the the sense of the place in the world comes from a different place if that makes any sense it comes from a knowing but it's not the knowing the of of the personality the security that i know who i am it's it's the knowing of unknowing almost <laughs> It's the knowing of life rather than your own controlled, tight, contracted sense of all of that goes. There can be a lot of feelings of insecurity loss. because of that and loss and lostness and who am I and where am I and everything. So as the plant, if it's a transplanted plant, is taken from a pot and put into the soil, the roots have to find their way into the new environment. And um, and that happens, that's just a natural thing. But yeah, I'm not belittling that process in any way. And there is a kind of process involved. I know some people will say there isn't, you just wake up and you're free and you're out. I don't think that's how it happens. That's not my experience. That's not what I've seen. Even in those people who say that, that's not what I've seen. Um, you know, this there is an adaptation to living in the relative level with the understanding that one is actually part of the absolute. Th this is why this is not for everyone. If there isn't a yearning for this in the cells, in the bones, I would advise people to turn away from this because you're going to cause such trouble and strife that you you're not going to have the ability to deal with you see if the yearning is there there is something inside that pulls you onwards and pulls you through and somehow gives you the wherewithal to deal with it even though it may be very hard at times but without that the chaos that is um brought up by this is going to be too much to bear you know, if, you, if most of your stake is still in the personality and, and that, you, you're not going to be able to go through it. It's going to be needless suffering because you're not going to be ready to let, let go of that. And none of this happens through your own volition. I want to make that clear. It's not that you can make yourself ready. If it so happens that there is this... I mean, people who have found this are often talked about as kind of mad people. Sometimes they're betrayed in that way because it's so... From the personality's point of view, it is mad. It's so mm. far beyond what feels safe. To, to me, I'm getting an image of someone in a spaceship, which represents the personality, and they're going out on the, on the cord, uh, you know, on a... Spacewalk. Spacewalk. And then you leave behind the spaceship, and you're just in the space. You know, there's, that's a kind of feeling of what it can be like because you you associate everything mm. that's safe with the spaceship but this in this scenario uh using that symbol the space is home in a way that the, the spaceship is a constriction if that